Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly FM84. Thank you for coming back and joining me on another video right here on the YouTube channel. If you've been around the channel for the past couple of days, we are currently in the middle of the Paris FC rebuild challenge. We have taken the reins in Paris, in the second club, in the city, and we are looking to bring them some success in the first five seasons of a brand new campaign that we have been running. If you were with us yesterday, you would have seen us pull through to the end of season two. In today's episode, we have got through to the 2nd of September 2023. So the summer transfer window for the third season is now closed. And as ever, we are going to start off with the transfers and the players that have come into and gone out of the club. And we have been making some big, big changes. Remember, if you haven't heard the rules already, we are using the children of the French Revolution. So all players that you're about to see will be 21 or under. And we are aiming to sign French youth players only. So let's jump into it and show you exactly what has been going on. So there's been a lot of transfer business at the club. Uh, the first two players that went out, the first one was a Brayton Fugay. Fugu. Fugay. Fugi. Uh, yeah, Brayton, he has gone out. He has gone to Nantes. We only bought him in quite recently, but he has to leave. He wasn't getting the first team football he wanted, so he has been moved on. And Czech Umar Diakiti, he is a player who has gone to Norwich, uh, 20 years old. Probably would have preferred to keep him, but another one has to leave the club, wanted to move on, wanted to go to a bigger club. Norwich came in and they only paid £350,000, but it was money in the bank for us. We needed it because we are having to constantly improve this squad. Don't forget, in the summer transfer window, we have two parts to the transfer window. So the first signings you're seeing here are from the 9th of June. That is when the window opens. When the season ticks over, it will become the 23-24 season. And any signings that we have from July onwards will all count into that. So let's run through the players that have come into the club then. So Jonathan Pitu is a player that we have signed. He is from Marseille. He can play through the middle of the park. He can also be a makeshift left and right winger. Uh, looking at him as a midfielder, though, you can see he has good passing, technique, vision, off the ball. Uh, decisions is only nine, but dribbling, finishing a 15 means he could actually be a makeshift striker too. First touch of 12 in the physicals, good acceleration, good natural fitness, good pace at 13. He's a player, I think, for the money that we paid. Could be a solid option for us. £850,000 was the fee. The next player was Johan Kathleen, coming from Guingamp. £300,000 we have paid for him. Uh, you can see he's another one of these players that we really, really like in these rebuilds. Can play left wing, can play right wing, can play through the middle, can also play as a makeshift striker. But if we look at him as a left winger, you can see he has good pace, good acceleration, good agility, natural fitness. So physicals are really good. He then has good corners, crossing, dribbling, first touch. Not so good on the finishing, so I probably wouldn't play him as a makeshift striker, but he could do it. Uh, technique, off the ball, vision are all good too. I think for the money we have paid, he probably could become a first teamer if he uh, works hard and gets in enough um, training. The next player we signed was Thomas Galem. He is a player. Who did we sign him from? He came in on a free transfer. He's coming from Montpellier, uh, another uh, option for us there. You've got Eunice al -Hanach. He is a player who could play as a centre-back or a defensive midfielder. Looking at his stats, we would think he's probably a centre-back, although unfortunately he's probably one of the shortest centre-backs you're ever going to see. Just 19 years old, only 5 foot 8. Mm. Tackling of 14, pace of 13, acceleration of 13, anticipation 14, decision 14, positioning 15. However, heading of 13, despite the fact that he's so short, however, jumping reach only 8. So not too sure if he's one for the first team or one to try and develop, but he was on the free transfer list from Green, uh, no, from PSG. So we went and just picked him up, and we're going to just see what we can do with him. The next one was Edin Sharid, another free transfer coming from Leon, uh, 19 years old. Can play through the middle of the park in both of those midfield options. He has good passing, good tackling, good positioning, decisions, aggression. Uh, acceleration, agility and pace. Another one, I'm not too sure if he's going to be an out-and-out out first teamer. Probably move him down to the second team and see how he develops. But coming from one of the bigger clubs in France, hopefully he has a good future ahead of him. And then we went on to sign a player where we smashed 
I'm not too sure whether it's the entire club record, but certainly the most money that I would have paid for a player in this save so far is Warren Bondo. He can play wide left, wide right, through the middle. He is, though, going to be playing as a central midfielder. You can see that is his best role and duty. Looking at his ability, he has three and a half stars at the moment against our first team squad. He has a five star potential against our first team squad. Picked him up, put him on £11,000 a week. But look at his stats. Stamina, acceleration, agility, uh, natural fitness are all good in the physical strength also for a central midfielder. Uh, composure, decisions of 16, determination of 15, flair, leadership off the ball all 12, vision and work rate of 14. Tackling and technique of 12 and 13, marking and passing of 12 and 14, first touch 16, dribbling of 14, crossing lets him down a little bit with 10, but I think this is a solid, solid purchase. 19 years old, I think we are going to put him straight into the first team and watch him flourish as he develops as a footballer. So as I said then, moving on to the second part of the transfer window. So this is July onwards. Uh, there is one transfer here that wasn't, but it was confirmed afterwards. And that was Jean-Claude Nagando. He has gone to Cotton Sports on a free. Mustafa Name went to Angers on a free. Florent Hanin went to TND on a free. Axel Bamba joined Middlesbrough on a free. And then Alan Zadi went to Getafe for 150000 Isiaka Torre went to Stad Marlon on a free. Marley Felix, who we brought in early on in the game and thought he was going to develop into a real good out and out like mainstay of our first team for the rest of the save, just did not develop. Uh, although his stats look okay, he was not getting in the first team, got unhappy. And we just decided to move him on and try and get some better replacements. So the next players to come in then was a few free transfers. Killian Camille, the first one, can play as a left back, can play as a right back, can play as a makeshift centre back. Uh, a little bit on the short side for a centre back at five foot nine, but he fits in perfectly as what we want from a wing back. Uh, pace of 12, acceleration of 12, agility is good, mentals. Has a lot of yellow there with aggression, anticipation, bravery, concentration, decisions, determination, teamwork, work rate. And a lot of good technicals too. Uh, crossing of 11, first touch of 11, marking of 11, passing of 11, tackling of 12 and technique of 11. So again, another option to come in and play either as a left back or as a makeshift right back. Either of those will do for us. Uh, the other player that we signed was Richard Richard. Uh, he, again, you're going to notice a pattern here. There is a left back and a right back. You can play as both of those. Probably not as good as the other player, but that versatility will always give him an option when he is at the club. Um, tackling of 12, marking of 11, first touch of 11, concentration, decisions of 15, uh, acceleration of 15, agility of 13, and pace of 13. Um, a player who popped up. And we thought, we'll just take a chance. He's coming from a decent enough team in uh, Marseille. So anything could happen with that. We then got back on to spending some money. And we went and signed Mr Zidane's son. Now, you're going to think to yourself, this is an Algerian player. Um, he was actually a French player and also a Spanish player. Uh, I did actually look at this one and think... This is the first time I think I'm going to pull this card. Because he is eligible to play for France, we're going to take him as a Frenchman, even though he is an Algerian. And basically, again, if we go... Oh, didn't want to send him on a leadership course, but away you go, Mr Theo. Um, what we wanted to look at was the fact that he's actually Theo Zidane Fernandez, and his favoured personnel are Zinedine Zidane, who are his father, Enzo Zidane is his brother, and Luca Zidane. He's also his brother, so he's now based in France. Hopefully, he will elect to play for France, and that will clear up the whole French under-21 thing. And hopefully, he will commit to them. But as a player, though, just going back to him, £300,000 from Real Madrid's youth teams. What's there not to like here? He has good technique of 16, passing, penalty taking, long shots, first touch, corners all 14, got dribbling in there, uh, free kick taking a 15, mentals. Anticipation, composure, decisions, determination, flair, uh, vision. They're all decent enough stats, aren't they? And in terms of the physicals, acceleration 11, jumping reach 14, natural fitness 14, pace 11, stamina 11, and strength of 13. So if he's a chip off the old block, I think he will settle into the club really, really well. £300,000 could turn out to be an absolute bargain. The next player, £325,000 from Milan, is Clinton Nusiala Makengo. 
He is a centre back who can double up as a left back again. Versatility. Six foot one, so not as tall as I would have liked him to have been, but he can play two positions, so not too fussed about that. Looking at his physicals, balance, jumping reach, and strength for 14, stamina 13, natural fitness 13. This is a 19 year old player who I think is ready to go straight in to our first team. Uh, the next player, Sandro Bertolucci. We got him on a free transfer. He comes in from, let's have a look. Comes in from Monaco, second team. Uh, again, a cover option as a striker. He has decent enough pace with 12 and acceleration of 13. Determination 13, composure 13, aggression 14. Dribbling 13, finishing of 12, first touch of 11 and heading of 12. Probably not a first teamer, but a player that we can certainly bring in and use where we can. The next player is Tituan Thomas. He is a midfielder who can play anywhere through the centre. You can see there there are four different positions, including a makeshift striker. We won't be using him for that with finishing of nine. But looking at him, again, he is another good rotation option. Somebody fit in the middle of the park. If we have a few injuries, we can always call upon him. And I think he will make a decent footballer. The next one is Billy Comitio. He is a player that I have done a video on for, for the FM Connection. He can turn out to be an absolute world star in some of these games. Uh, not 100% convinced he is in this game, but a two-star current ability with a four-and-a-half-star potential ability against my current squad. I'm willing to take that risk every day of the week, considering he was just floating around on a free transfer. He actually had agreed to join Watford, but couldn't get a work permit for England, so turned himself back from Watford and came and joined us on a free transfer. So I think that is a piece of solid business. The last player to come in is Siku Mara. And this is a big, big transfer. £5.6 million pounds paid up front. 21 years old. French under 21, two caps. He has good dribbling, finishing a 13, first touch of 12, passing 11, technique of 13, pace of 13, acceleration 13, determination. I mean, look at the mentals there. So... Bravery, concentration of 13, off the ball, work rate 14, determination 17, as I said. So this is a player I think we are really going to have to try and build around. Put him up top, give him the ball, and hopefully he will start to score bags and bags of goals. So that there then is taking us right the way up till the 2nd of September. The last transfer we had to come into the club was the 24th of the 8th. And that means we have already kicked off another Ligue 1 campaign. So let's quickly have a look at the competitions tab before you fill you in on everything else. Started off Liga 1 with three games played, 2 won, one lost, and six points. Um, the Coupe de France starts on the 21st of October, so 48 days away. We are entered in the ninth round, so looking forward to that. But let's show you, as always, the club finances off the back of that transfer window. You see the club has minus £2 million in the bank, so we are still waiting for the big time the big money to start coming into the club. I'm not 100% sure it's ever going to, looking at the, the finances and the players we were able to bring in. I've got a feeling that it's going to be difficult for the foreseeable. Uh, in terms of budget, transfer budget is 419,000. Wage budget, 192,000, but we are over that. So probably going to move that 419 across. However, if we can save a little bit of that transfer budget for January, we might need to sign one or two players come then. In terms of club vision then, develop players using the club's youth system. At one point we were doing that. However, we got to the point in the save now where we are having to rely on other teams uh, like Marseille, Lyon, Monaco and PSG going out and buying their youth players. But we are putting some of those straight back into our youth system. So I'm not sure if we promote them, whether that will count as developing them ourselves. But we are willing to have a go. Uh, play counter-attacking football. They are pleased with that. Sign players from the lower levels of the domestic game. It says they're delighted, but we didn't really do that. Um, not too sure why they're delighted there, but we'll take that nonetheless. Uh, play entertaining football, reserving judgment. So uh, we are we do play entertaining football. I mean, last season, I think we had a pretty poor goal difference, but that was because we could score goals, but also concede goals. If that isn't entertaining, I don't know what is. Uh, Five-year plan then, work within the wage budget, struggling, as I said. We are over, but we do have the space in that uh, budget to adjust the budget and bring it back in line with what we are looking for. Sign players to sell for a profit, they are disappointed. The 
first couple of players that I thought we were going to sell for profit didn't actually go for too much of a profit. We made a couple of hundred thousand pounds here or there, but there were a few players as well that had left the club for less than we signed them for, which obviously isn't helping that. Minimum two-year contracts for first-team players. We are doing that as we go along. And then let's look at the five-year plan going forwards. Then end of the current season, fight bravely against relegation. I think we will be able to do that. We've already got two wins out of three. Uh, Cup de France reached the 10th round at minimum, and that starts in October. Then tr training facilities are being upgraded. A contract gets renewed, and they want us to remain in the league. So well, let's go back to the competitions tab then. Let's have a look at Liga 1 Uber Eats. You can see that that win-loss record is played three, won two, lost one. A zero goal difference again, and six points. So we have kicked off our season pretty steadily. If we look at the schedule and show you who we beat. Beat Toulouse 2-1 with goals from Theo and Ugachukwu. Montpellier got swept aside with goals from Bondo and Ugachukwu. And we lost to Lille 3-1. Uh, Lauren... Zegrova and Zachariah scoring for them and Lenny Lacroix scoring for us. So let's have a little look then at some player stats before we start to wrap this one up then. Uh, in terms of most goals, Lauren has come out blocks flying. He has four goals from four appearances in the tops that is there. We currently don't have a player in that metric. Uh, most assists, 11 players share two, one of which is Joan Kathleen. As I said, I think he could establish himself as a real first teamer if he can play football and continue those kind of standards most shots Lewandowski has had 18 in the first three appearances no players for us there he's also got three man of the match awards none of our players are on that list most key passes has gone to Neymar so far this season with 16 but Johan Kathleen is on there with 10 best pass completion not really important most tackles won Laurent Abigail uh, he has got 16 key passes already from his first three appearances. Most dribbles made, Inigo Cordoba uh, for Toulouse. 16 dribbles made uh, from three appearances. We are not represented on there. Most clean sheets then, uh, Gautier Larsonne. He has got three from three appearances and we are not represented on there. A few has conceded, there are two players. Larson Air is one and Benjamin Lecomte for Monaco and then there are a few other players but we are not represented there. So the final thing to look at then is the squad going forward. So let's look at the assistant report. What is the starting eleven that we are going to be going into the, the next part of the season with? And it's Bajic in goal, Hadjam, Lacroix, Ndi, Bernauer, you got Uga Chukwu, uh, Jabi, Bondo, Tal, Tramoni and then Diaby Fadiga up top so again there is room for improvement but Matthias Tau on the left there uh, he has room for improvement just in himself he's still quite young and he's a raw talent uh, Lacroix and Hadjam two players who probably we could look to either move on or just replace in their positions and keep them as backups I do think though that they are good enough to probably remain at the club so then it's been a positive start to season three 2nd of September 2023 and we are sat 6th in the table. Can we push on this season? Can we improve on what we achieved last season? The only way for you to find out is to come back tomorrow and join me on the next part of the Paris FC rebuild. But before I go, if you're at this point of the video, you're still listening, still watching, firstly, a big thank you. Second, if you haven't hit the like and subscribe button already, please consider doing so. Helps the channel, helps me get these videos out to so many more people, get so many eyes on the videos. I really, really do appreciate it all. But for this one, I'm going to wrap it there. Go and check another video out on the channel and I'll catch you soon.